murder, if you hate, you're guilty of the same charge. Even if you never act out adultery, if you lust in your mind, you're guilty of the same charge. Wow. So action and thought to God. If you're sinning in your heart, it's, it's sinning, period. So what do we do? Well, we always are going to have choices. Life is about choices, a friend once told me. And the decisions we make are about who we are. And they come from our heart. And if the spirit lives in you, it's greater than that spirit that lives in the world. So the key is our verse today, John 3.30. He must become greater I must become less. Now we know that this is actually John the Baptist and he's talking about Jesus because they're wondering about Jesus and he's saying he's greater than me. But y'all, this is a, true about us too. If you want to see Christ in your life, if you want to see uh, your life acted out on Christ's behalf, then guess what you have to do? You have to die to your flesh, your ways, your thoughts, your desires, your dreams, everything. And people will, in this world will tell you, you be you, and you do you. And I, I get that to a point, but it isn't really about you. It's not really about me. It's about God. And I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to do what God wants. And you know what? If I love him in my heart, I will. I won't listen to the world. Do we occasionally screw up and do that? Yes, but y'all repent of it. People say, well, that's only natural. Being natural is not what Christians want to be. We want to be spiritual. We want to be led by the Holy Spirit. We don't want to be led by the world, by our flesh. You know, we always talk about the attributes of the Holy Spirit, and one of them is self-control. And sometimes I just don't see the self-control in my life that I want to. And I talk to my husband about it, especially about, you know, watching the way I eat, drink, exercise, the things of my flesh that I could take better care of my body, an obvious thing certainly as important or more important things exist but I was talking to my husband about it and I said why is it I just don't have that that, that self-discipline that self-control well and the Holy Spirit lives in me and I have access to God level self control and he said this. you still have this you still gotta die to this I must become less he must become greater do you see? It will always be this. And everything we think, everything we do, and people are like, oh, Beth, you talk about all the time, every day, is that all? Yeah, uh, yes, yes. And I think as we get older, it gets easier, and you know why. I don't know that it's because we, we get wiser. I think our flesh just gets harder and harder to deal with. We get older, we get sick, we get injured, we have to deal with all kinds of maybe memories that are difficult or painful or uh, problematic or whatever and we just get to where we just gotta rely on the spirit because our flesh is starting to give out isn't it maybe it's a blessing from God that our flesh does because then we become more and more reliant on him and that is the best place we can be y'all it's the best place we can be let me see how much time we have left or did I run over I did run over, so it's got to be two-part then. It's got to be two-part because this is too important. When we rely on ourselves, we are actually messing up. God never needed our help. He never tells us to rely on ourselves. You know, people... Um, quote this like they're quoting scripture and it's probably because they don't know it's not scripture. God helps those who help themselves. No. No. God never said that. That's not scripture. That, matter of fact, I don't think God even likes that. He tells us to depend on Him for everything. To trust Him no matter what. And you know one of my favorite scriptures. You know, I know I'm bringing up three sets of scriptures here because we've done 1 John 4, 4 and now our Better than therapy, which is John 3.30. And then I want you to also turn to John 14.1. And we, we certainly have talked about this before. But uh, I, I want to go over it again. 
because when you think about the things of today, it's very uh, tension-inducing. It causes us to become fearful. It causes us to wonder what's going to happen next, what's going to happen in our nation, what's going to happen in our neighborhoods. Um, are people going to go crazy if Trump uh, stays in office? Is the country going to go socialist if Biden gets in office? Um, are we going to be better or worse with COVID-19? Are we going to be better or worse with other things, um, depending on who gets in office? And how is it going to affect the nation? How is it going to affect this great country? What changes will happen that need to happen? And what changes won't happen that don't need to happen or do need to happen but don't? There's so much to think about. And that's just this country. That doesn't include what's going on in China and Russia and Europe and all over this world. Above us in Canada and below us in Mexico. Y'all, you could drive yourself crazy with the news of the day if you do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't be informed. And especially women, and especially women with children, be informed. You know? But don't use your information to be fearful. Use it to be prayerful. Say, Lord, this is what I've heard in the news today, and I'm concerned. And just bring it to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I admit I'm afraid, but I don't want to be. You know what I want to be? I want to be lesser, and I want you to be more. And I want to trust you, no matter what happens in the election or in the world, because maybe God is bringing about something that's going to be horrible. And people are like, I should be afraid. No, you trust God. Because eventually, he says it's going to spiral down to just be horrible. And if he didn't end it, no one would survive. Why? Because he's got to bring back Jesus. But before he does, he's got to cause people to fall to their knees. Why? Because there's nothing more important than people coming to faith in Christ. That's a forever thing. Okay, well, what happens to us? We'll, we'll be raptured. Uh, yeah, eventually. We may go through a lot first, and we will have to, just like the early Christians who were martyred and, and sought after and killed, we may have to go through some pretty tough times first so that God can get the very last believers. And if you're a believer, then that should be your agenda too. Will it be easy? No. Um, will it be scary? I'm sure. Should we be afraid? No. We should trust God. You know why? Because John 14 is still true. Let me read it to you. And let it comfort your heart. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in me too. This is Jesus talking. And he just equivocated himself to being God. He goes on to do it more and more in these verses. My father's house has many rooms. Or Some people uh, talk about translations that say in my father's house are many rooms. Or my father has many mansions. It doesn't matter. You're going to live with him and there's going to be plenty of room. That's what Jesus is saying. And here's what's really important. And I want you to put your name in here. If it were not so, insert your name. So I'm going to insert my name. If it were not so, Beth, I would have told you. This is Jesus Christ saying to you and saying to me, you don't need to be troubled. God's got plenty of room for you. And, if, and you're going to be there. And if it weren't true, if that was a lie, you. That should comfort you. That should comfort me. You know, if this, if this, if this was not true, he would have made sure I figured it out. He would have made sure that I knew. And some of you may think, well, I know. You know why you know what you know? Because he made sure that you did. He has been teaching you your whole life through your experiences, through people you interact with, through prayer time, through being in the Word, through a salvation experience. If you don't know the Lord yet, He's still working on it. He's still working on you, just like He's still working on me. But I've come to faith in Him, and so I can hear His voice. And you will too, if you do not know His voice yet. All you have to do is ask. 
Jesus to be your great God and Savior. Come and live in your heart, and he will, and he will open up his word to you. Sometimes people say, how do you know the word so good? <clears throat> I read it. I ask the Holy Spirit, teach me, and he does. I'm no smarter than you. I'm not wiser. I am older. I mean, come on. <laughs> But, uh, and so I've had more time to learn and more time to trust. And as I get older, I know less than I thought I did, but I know more about him because I'm closer to him as I go through my life, getting closer and closer to him. So let's say this again. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. I'm the truth. I'm the life you're looking for. No one comes to the Father. No one. By any other faith by any other set of rules, by any other set of regulations, there's only one way to get to the Father, and that's through the Son. What does that mean? Through the cross. Through what he did at the cross, that's how you get forgiveness for your sins, and instead of being unholy, you have been wiped clean, you are holy, you can now go right into the Holy of Holies, and right into the very presence of God, because Jesus tore that temple. Jesus at the cross. God at the cross caused that temple veil that separated man from God to be torn in two forever. You can go straight to God through Jesus Christ. You can be with him at any time. Um, he says, if you know me, you know my father as well. From now on, you know him and you have seen him. Again, Jesus claiming to be God. Philip says, Lord, show us the father and that'll be enough. Do you ever do that? Lord, if you'll just do this, that'll be enough. And he knows better. And Jesus says, don't you know me, Philip, even, it, uh, even after I've been with you for such a long time, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. Y'all, I don't know how to make this any clearer except to say we got to trust.